You might be killing your camera's dynamic range and DaVinci Resolve without even knowing it. When you first get into the color page, I think a lot of beginners tend to either add a Rec. 709 LUT or use the color space transform to convert their footage from log footage to Rec. 709 in the first node. And then either do all of the color correcting and color grading in that first node with the Rec. 709 conversion or in multiple nodes after. But if you convert your log footage to Rec. 709 in the first node, you are in the Rec. 709 color space and that only limits you to six stops of dynamic range. So if you've brought a really expensive cinema camera for like £4,000, then you're only limited to six stops and you're not getting the full capabilities of that camera's dynamic range. Yes, you do capture the full dynamic range of the camera when you're out shooting, so there is that information there, but it's when you start pushing the highlights and the shadows, that's when you don't have enough room or flexibility in post because you're in Rec. 709 color space. So what you need to do is convert the log footage to Rec. 709 using the color space transform or alert in the last node and then work backwards so you're color grading and color correcting in the log color space and then you get that flexibility to play around with the logs dynamic range now if you want to go one step further and start working with 20 stops of dynamic range what you need to do is add a color space transform to the first node and go from the input gamma and the color space so in my case it would be canon cinema gamma and then canon c log 3 and then you need to convert that into davinci wide gamut and then the output gamma to davinci DaVinci Intermediate. Now that puts you in the DaVinci Wide Gamut color space, which can go up to 20 stops of dynamic range, which gives you even more room to play around with the highlight shadows and color correction and color grading to how you want it. And then on the last node, you need to add another color space transform and go from DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate to Rec. 709 and Gamma 2.4, or in my case, it'll be Rec. 709A because I'm working on a Mac. And now everything in between them two color space transform nodes, that is where you can work with the 20 stops of dynamic range while seeing your final image in Rec. 709 so you can edit all of the lovely dynamic range while looking at the final image. So ever since I've learned about this, I've been doing it all the time and I've noticed a huge difference when I am color correcting and it's completely changed the way I shoot and color grade my videos and it's made me love DaVinci Resolve even more. In fact, it's made me love it that much that I decided to buy DaVinci Resolve Studio because of all of the amazing features that it offers. And if you wanna know why some of these features made me buy DaVinci Resolve Studio, then you want to go watch this video next.